that's what's more fun for me. Nice. Than... From The Dude to Rooster, Jeff Bridges has played a huge variety of roles in his career. With his mellow attitude and voice to match, Jeff has breezed through his career and worked with some of the industry's finest. Bridges' egoless and collaborative nature has earned him gigs in over 70 films, with many actors and directors requesting to work with him again and again. It all began in 1949 during the golden age of Hollywood. Jeffrey Leon Bridges was born to well-known TV and film stars Lloyd and Dorothy Dean Bridges. This golden boy was automatically entrenched in the world of film, and Jeff's film debut was when he was only four months old, being nursed by Jane Greer in the film The Company She Keeps. A fact unknown to some, there's actually many famous Bridges in Hollywood, with multiple members of Jeff's family forming a rather large acting dynasty. Uh, my father, was in fact the first MC for the Hollywood Entertainment Museum. This is uh, back, I think, guess in the early, uh, what, mid 90s or something like that. And so uh, the Bridges have a history with this organization. I can feel my dad here tonight. He would, he would really uh, approve of what's going on. The loyal support and help from Jeff's father would be the building blocks for him to cross the bridge from acting to Hollywood icon. You know, getting your foot in the door as an actor is the toughest thing. And as I was saying tonight, my dad loved showbiz so much and he wanted to turn his kids on to it. I'm, I'm so glad that, uh, that he did. And it took a while. I, I had to, I maybe made uh, 10 films before I decided, uh, oh yeah, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll go this way and, you know, do it. And I'm so glad I listened to him and uh, thank you, Dad. Thank you, Mama. Jeff's initial star status was achieved through his breakthrough film, The Last Picture Show. The movie had critical and popular success, and Jeff's portrayal of Dwayne Jackson, the macho ex-football star, earned him his first Oscar nod. Bridges owned the role because the aim for his character, Dwayne Jackson, was to be a really horrible man. But Bridges injected his naturally fun personality and gave the character extra depth and warmth, which made him less offensive. Even after all that good work, Jeff didn't take home the gold statue for the last picture show, nor did he with his second Oscar nomination for starring as Clint Eastwood's sidekick in Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. By now, Jeff had proven his versatility, his ability to be cast in any number of genres. Some of the films were flops and others classics. But soon, Jeff would land a role that perfectly summed up his easygoing nature. Jeff played the dude, AKA his dudeness in The Big Lebowski. The Coen brothers directed this comedy classic and based the part of the dude on some of Jeff's previously laid back roles, as well as his off screen persona. So much so, they let him wear some of his actual clothes, such as his drawstring pants and plastic shoes. These became the ultimate emblems of dudeness. So entrenched was his inner dude, in 2008, Jeff recreated a few elements of the dude for his magazine executive character, Clayton Harding, in How to Lose Friends and Alienate People. I mean, I guess I played, uh, you know, kind of executive types uh, before, you know, from uh, Tucker to uh, the president, you know, and the contender and these kinds of things, and kind of mixed with some uh, Funky is the word that's popping into my mind. I got a little, got a little dude injected in, in there too, you know? And I think that's all part of Clayton's character. It was important for Jeff to avoid being typecast. So he tried to play different and contrasting roles in each movie. This was definitely the case when he went from playing the ultimate stoner to playing the role of car maker Charles Howard in Seabiscuit. No matter what the role, Jeff loves to immerse himself in the characters he plays. And this film was no exception. And it was during a time when the American people were going through uh, the depression and the, the fear of a world war. Uh, and at this time, the American people saw Seabiscuit as a hero to them. Uh, because like Seabiscuit, uh, they were kind of down and out. And you know, Seabiscuit had a pretty atrocious uh, record. He was by no means a champion when my character Howard uh, got a hold of him. And he became a champion largely due to the fact that these three 
fellas uh, saw in each other and in Seabiscuit what the world failed to see in, in them uh, was that they really had value and uh, they all gave each other a chance. After successfully racing around the track for years, it would be easy to think it may be time for Bridges to be put out to pasture. In the mid-2000s, he featured in a few moderately successful films before making a strong impact in the comic blockbuster Iron Man. Playing Iron Man's nemesis, Obadiah Stane, he was able to reveal two of his favourite things, comic books and bald heads. It harkens back to when you were a kid, and when I was a kid, I loved comic books and loved to play and, you know, dress up like superheroes and, and that sort of thing. So this is probably an extension of that as well. I've never shaved my head, always wanted to. And I thought, you know, someday a part will come along and I'll have to do it. And, and this one, uh, it came along and I saw the, uh, the comic book character there and I said, oh, well, this, you know, I'll, I'll do this. I'll talk to John about it. And John says, well, don't feel like you have to shave your head. And I said, oh, really? You know, I kind of wanted him to say, oh, yeah, you got to shave your head. But he didn't, so we kind of chipped at it. Bridges loves music and has written and performed a lot of his own tunes. So when it came to starring in Crazy Heart, not only did the role suit his acting style, but it also included one of his passions. Shot on a tiny budget in just 24 days, Crazy Heart was to become arguably the most significant film of his career. Ironically, when completed, the movie failed to impress its producers, but Jeff's out of the ordinary performance and backing from director Scott Cooper's agency made sure the film finally reached the big screen. And it paid off. Bridges went on to win a Golden Globe and earned himself a fifth Best Actor Oscar nomination. All these accolades were great, but more important to this laid back dude was the recognition from his peers. Movie stars often get risk averse because, well, the failures are so public. <laughs> but Jeff willingly walks the plank every time he steps foot on a set. And as a result, he has never lost his joy of acting and his characters still sizzle with the same passion he had 40 years ago. Nobody works harder. He has never given a lazy performance and somehow always makes it look effortless. His work in Crazy Heart is yet another performance that inspires other actors to raise the standards for themselves. The Academy agreed, and Bridges finally won his first Oscar for Best Actor. He thanked his wife and children, then raised his award up to the heavens and thanked his mother and father for, quote, turning him on to such a groovy profession. I was expecting to, you know, hang out with my friends, feel good. What I didn't expect was the emotion that kind of welled up in me when I kind of got that reception that I got there and felt all that, that, uh, that love and appreciation coming. It was really a wonderful feeling. For years, Bridges was considered by many to be the best actor to have never won an Oscar. So now that he finally had bagged himself a shiny gold statuette, there appeared to be a bright neon light glowing around Bridges. That's right, his next project would be Tron Legacy, the remake of the ultra-awesome 80s cult flick. In this remake, Jeff was able to play his character, Kevin Flynn, in a younger and older form due to cutting-edge technology. It was pretty wild, uh, pretty psychedelic. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the, the, the things that always bothered me as an actor when I've had to, uh, you know, be in a movie where you have to uh, play yourself at different ages is that there's usually another actor that has to play uh, that part of, you know, as a young man. And now uh, that's no longer the case. You can play your yourself at any age, whether it's an old man or a, an infant, and to be on uh, this groundbreaking movie where that, uh, that is, the birth of that idea has really, uh, you know, been born is uh, it's a, a wonderful, exciting thing. Following on from the time travel themes of Tron, Bridges went back in time to his recent role of Rooster Cogburn in True Grit. Once again, Bridges applied his easygoing and fluid method of researching to find his character. Uh, well, uh, you know, I approach most of the 
characters I play uh, the same way, where you you start with the story, you read the you know the script, and the in the case this case the book, it's wonderful to have a book to help base your character on, um, and uh, and then all, all you know also uh, different tasks that your character has to do, ride. So that was you know a very pleasant task. I love riding. Mm -hmm. And you know, studying those things, looked at a lot of photographs of those times to kind of get into the, you know, get the groove going. Could Jeff Bridges be the dude of all dudes? He was one of the youngest ever to be nominated for an Oscar at the age of 22, and then one of the oldest to win his first Oscar at the age of 60. He's versatile and respected in the industry, and has survived for decades in Hollywood by being himself, one laid-back dude. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and mnc.tv.